Hello, New Hope. Boy, I sure do love all of y'all. Some of y'all are in, in staying home and, and faithful to watch online, and I'm so glad that you are, but we sure miss you. Can't wait till it gets to a point here, maybe in a few months where we can hug each other and all this thing goes away. I'm praying that it just goes away. But just know we're here. You can call us anytime. We love you so much. And, and uh, you know, this church, uh, 13 years ago, the Lord spoke to me. He did not want this church to be about me. I was praying about the future and praying about the little children who are now teenagers and praying, God, I don't want them not to have a great church. I'd observed several churches in our community just disintegrate. I don't have all the answers of why we've, we've evaluated that, so I won't go into that. But I said, Lord, I know one thing. If it's your church, it's going to be strong, and I don't want it to be my church. I never want it to be my church. And I said, Jesus, what do I do? And then the Lord just put it on my heart, you know, to make sure it's about, about God, about Jesus, about his word, about truth, and about uh, being the body of Christ in our mission to go into the world and not about me. And he told me to start having other people begin to preach. And slowly I did that because I'd done every preaching. And so over the period of time, more and more of our pastors would learn to preach. We edit, we talk to them, we evaluate. We, we have some really good preachers, but guess what? God wants preachers also to be godly men and to lead in other ways and to pastor and and all of that matters too. And I, I, I'm, uh, we're, we're doing our very best to uh, pastor y'all in this, these hard times and uh, keep a check on you. Please know if for whatever reason, you know, you need something, I want you to hear this. You don't have to wait for us to check in on you. Please call us. With that said, I got two simple thoughts. One is with everything going on in 2020 had happened and even 2021 now, we don't know what's gonna happen. Can I just tell you, I kind of feel like as I look at my life and I'm 67 year old, years old and I've had my own physical pains and, and sometimes struggles and I look around the world and I remember even when I was a kid, uh, I mean, I was born in 53, and you'll remember it's uh, May of 48 when nation, Israel became a nation. So all my life, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, all my life. And actually the signs have increased and increased and increased and increased and increased. And I thought about this, I thought, you know, here we live in our life, we try to find meaning, we, we find entertainment, we go to, you know, we play ball, we go to ball games, we we uh, watch concerts, we go to, uh, you know, Disney on ice or ballets, we get involved in all kinds of activities and we try to make life meaningful for our kids. We do all this stuff and you get to the end and you go, you know what? This year has taught us one thing. We don't know about tomorrow. I mean, literally you could be healthy one day and dead in two weeks and it just doesn't make much sense and I don't understand it. Now I'm not afraid, but I have evaluated it as I've lost good friends uh, this year and I've evaluated and I come to the conclusion that Solomon did because he tried to find meaning in so many things, in relationships and you know, and all kinds of stuff. He, he got involved in sin and he, you know, he's known as the wisest man. And I don't know why he didn't just pour in right to God and find meaning in something deeper. And uh, but he, he ended up making a conclusion. You know, one of his big statements is vanity of vanity, all is vain. You know, meaningless, meaningless, nothing matters. What, what have I done? You know, I, my, you, 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 you're born and you die, and then, and then what? You look around and you go, what, what, what was all of that? And he looked back and you think about things, and you, there's some good things, but you know, the things that really stick to me that really matter are people that have come to Jesus. And uh, that, that matters more than me being an All-American basketball player. Or, you know, it matters more than, than whatever else. You know, even, even building a, a church organization called New Hope it's the individual people that you win, that you disciple, that come to Jesus because that's eternal stuff. And I think, I think Solomon ends his book in Ecclesiastes with an eternal statement. He says, focus on eternity. Listen to what he says, it's pretty powerful. And it's what the Lord told me about this way back in April, May, about fearing God, you know, get right with God, stay right with God, you know, uh, don't be afraid, move forward. Uh, don't back up, people, the world needs Jesus. And this is what he says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is the whole book of Ecclesiastes. He says, the whole matter, fear God, 
Keep his commandments, for this is a whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Listen, let's be right with God. Let's fear God. Let's remember that we, our life is a blink away. We don't ever know about tomorrow, but I, we do know who holds tomorrow and we know what holds eternity for us if we have the peace of Jesus that comes into our hearts. And then I, I, I think about, you know, this end times, end times, end times. Well, I mean, it is end times, you know, I mean, it could be any moment. And the Bible says, ever since I was little, it never changed what it says. It's, it tells us uh, to live today like he could come and he who has the hope of Jesus come and purifies himself. But, but listen to this, if you tell me it's not what we're facing in our world today. He says in chapter three, Paul says to Timothy, check it, second Timothy, he says, this know also in the last days, perilous times shall come. Men will be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, uh, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady meaning, you know, uh, proud, high-minded, high you know, thinking more of themselves than they should, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, and this is what it is, because we, we our, our nation and our world is worse than what you think, because this is what's going on in religion in a lot of places, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. A form of godliness, but denying the power. It's the power to save us from sin. Not just to cleanse the sins we get to heaven and leave us powerless. It's the power of the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the power of the Spirit that makes us born again by the Spirit. It's the power of the Spirit that comes into our hearts and changes us. It changes how we think, how we feel, our motives, our desires, what we do with our money, what we do with our time, it changes everything. And I'm worried for some of you, honestly, that you haven't been changed by the power of Jesus, that you raised up in the church. You know the theology stuff, maybe. You know about God, but you've never met Jesus with the, with the encounter of his spirit where you fell on your knees and cried out, save me. I can't do this on my own. And I'm asking you today to pray right now with me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Please forgive my sin. Please, God, change my heart. Change my way of thinking to your way, God. Change my heart to feel what you feel, God. Change my desires to be your desires, God. And let me see this world through your eyes, God, that is just temporary. We're just passing through. We're just tent dwellers. And that we have a hope. And that hope is sure. And that, Jesus, you're going to come. The trumpet's going to sound. The dead in Christ's going to rise first. And those that are still living on this earth, we're going to go out to meet you in the air. And I want to put my eyes fixed on you, Jesus, as the Hebrew writer said, the author, the finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ, who endured the cross, endured the pain, endured everything for us. And to us not be discouraged, but keep on, because we haven't endured yet to that point. But even if we do, like Paul said, when he was writing, he said, there's some that have died uh, in faith and they were sawn in two. They were cut in two. Some of them had all kinds of things happen, but they never lost their faith. And Lord, we're not afraid. We are people of faith. We do not have the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And you said 365 times, do not fear. We do not fear. We do not fear. We will follow you. And we know that, God, if you clothe the field with beautiful lilies, you'll clothe us. We know that if you feed the little sparrows that fall, God, that you're going to feed us, God. And we know that, God, we're going to have provision for housing. We're going to take care of us. Lord, let us love you more than we love our comforts of our nation and love the comforts of our life, God. And may we trust you and you alone, Jesus. And may we be more concerned about souls dying and going to hell and winning them to you, Jesus, than we are about, about uh, something that we have now, losing it because of the crazy things going in the world, God, or even losing our life. God, may we care more about souls than losing our life because Paul says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And that, that, uh, that his whole passion is to take this gospel and preach it and go forward in the name of Jesus to give that to everyone because he had experienced it. And Lord, we were lost. We were sinners. We were, our hearts, our flesh, it is wicked. And I pray, Jesus, you would help us all and follow you, God. Bless everyone listening and praying with me and let us go forth with joy, 
faith, hope, and love, Jesus, because this is the day you've made, God, and we're going to rejoice in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, one last thing. I know I'm a little bit quirky. I've been known to sit around with my winter coat on for an hour or two indoors. I don't know if it's because I'm old. I just feel a little cold in my bones. So this is my new little coat I got. It's really, really warm. I love it, love it, love it, and I love you. Have a good day.